And that, that reparation money given by the German government to Israel didn't go to the victims of the Holocaust, by the way. It went to the Israeli state. The Israeli state still keeps money for the victims of the Jewish Holocaust. You know, people actually go to Switzerland and there's a Swiss uh, gold and this and that. Israel has more money belonging to victims of the Jewish Holocaust than the Swiss banks. Really, victims of the Jewish Holocaust in Israel, some of them are, are still fighting for their money. And the Israeli government keeping the money. And of course, if you take money as an Israeli state, you use the money for anything you like. If you take money from Barack Obama now, you use it for settlements, you use it for the army, you use it for the technology, you use it for everything. There is no point of Barack Obama saying, look, I'm against settlement. He is actually giving money which is going to settlement. He's actually, some of the money going to Israeli settlements under the apartheid rule. And the Europeans are actually contributing to our catastrophe. The Europeans, the British, the British contributed to the destruction of Palestine. They gave the Balfour Declaration and they created the Jewish the Zionist community. They would have there was no Jewish state, by the way. The British were primarily responsible for our destruction. And the German helped in 1952 with reparation to the Israeli government. The victims of the Jewish Holocaust are entitled to their property, by the way. I will be the first people to fight for these victims. If you have a property in Berlin, you are entitled to come back and claim it. I am 100% with the victims of the Jewish Holocaust. But the money used for the Israeli government for colonizing Palestine, for taking over land belonging to Palestinian uh, refugees. This is what I call colonialism. This is the way the German government, call it out of guilt, call it out of uh, godless, lack of being brave, lack of acknowledging truth, if you like. They are. You're not neutral. Don't think you are neutral. You're sitting in Berlin, you think, oh, we are neutral. We're just watching. We are, you know, we are observer. The two sides of the problem. You're actually part of it. You're contributing to it indirectly through to your taxpayers. And by sending volunteers, and by maintaining Israeli apartheid. You're doing it. You're part of it. Objectively, you're part of it. But you could also be part of the uh, struggle to tell the truth. Also, I do not believe that the interest of the Jews in Israel is apartheid. I don't believe that. I think the interest of the Jews in Israel, who are there and I accept them there and I don't want to get rid of anyone of there, is actually to live in peace with us, equality. This is fundamentally their interest, is to live equally with us, not as our um, uh, slavers. We don't want to be their slaves. They have no interest in that. They have no interest in the long term. It's not their interest to be our colonizers. Look at the casualties. Look at their suffering. Look at... So, uh, so I think telling the truth to, um, to Israelis, I do not think also salvation is going to come from within. Vote after vote. Last time they voted for apartheid, Netanyahu and Lieberman. Vote after vote since 1967 has been going to the right. The Labour Party in Israel has been demolished completely. So the Israelis are voting for apartheid, they are voting for racism. They're not voting for a really two state solution, a real Palestinian state, a viable state. They're not going to do it from within. You need to help them in the way we help South Africans to get out of it. Unless we do something about it here in Europe, Israel, Palestine will come to us, it will come to haunt us. It will spill onto our streets and towns and that explosive situation in Palestine, that, that uh, part of the Middle East, that, that uh, the, 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 the refugee issue, the Palestinian refugee issue, millions of people are refugees, this issue will be central to the way we deal with it. And if we don't deal with it, it will come to us, it will come to haunt us here. So I think there is a responsibility for us, actually, people, to say, look, there's an alternative to it. Continuing that catastrophe is not in the interest of Jews and Palestinians. 
and, and, and I think um, and some people are, are, are changing. I mean, they are, there is a change in public opinion in, in, in Britain, in Spain, in some European countries I visit. So things are changing on the public opinion level, but not changing on the level of Angela Merkel, um, Sarkozy, Gordon Brown. That political elite which dominates Europe is not changing, and the media is changing. But there are changes from below. I don't know, about, know about, much about Germany. Maybe Germany is much slower than actually um, European Europeans. But things, things are changing, and I think unless we help that change, unless we nudge it, unless we encourage people, and unless we put pressure from here, which means sanctions, which means boycott of Israeli goods. That's a key thing actually to understanding how Israel flourishes. Israel trades with Europe. Um, most Israeli trades actually with Europe, not with America, by the way. The selling and buying, the trade. The Israeli trade with Europe is something like 33, 34 billion dollars a year, perhaps even more. I think these are old figures. Most Israeli trades are with Europe. Some of this trade, some of this produce coming from settlements. Israeli settlements on the West Bank move their produce to, to Israel and this, this produce also comes to you. You could be buying produce of Israeli settlements without knowing and you will not be able to know. I can assure you the Israelis are so clever and they will invent all sorts of ways to try to make sure the produce of settlers on the West Bank will not be distinguishable from the produce of within the Green Lines. And the Israelis are doing it. So there's no point, there is no point of, of, uh, of what the EU telling us. The EU is actually living in a, um, Alice in Wonderland, really, um, a cuckoo land, what we call. They're telling us we want to, we want to boycott the produce of Israeli uh, settlers. The EU has been telling us this for years. It doesn't work. It will not work unless you walk at Israeli produce. And this will make impact. It's something peaceful. This is not something violent. This is something which is legitimate, which people use it against South Africa. It will make the Israelis listen. The Israelis will listen when it does hit their pockets. And it will make an impact. But unless we, we go for that, don't wait for that so-called peace process and Obama and Latinia. This is nonsense. I've heard it before, I've heard it for the last 40 years. Same thing, oh no, 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 nothing will happen. Nothing will happen at the UN also. I'm not um, against the UN. We had endless resources in the UN. We'll just pass another revolution, a resolution and it will be blocked by Barack Obama and he will not go to the Security Council and the Americans will not invade Israel the same way they invaded Iraq or Afghanistan or this or that and, it, and threatening to invade Iran. It would just be the same old wishy-washy, do-nothing thing. And I, and I think the, the Palestinians need, need, need our hope. And they're desperate on the, on the ground, the people are desperate, whether it's in Gaza or whether it's uh, on the West Bank. And um, I didn't say much about the Palestinian leadership. I think I'll leave it to maybe to questions about that, because I think part of the problem is also the lack of proper leadership. Uh, and we are not making things easy for, 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 uh, for us here in Europe. But I'm talking to people who are living in Europe and people say, how can I help? What can I do? And how do I do it? Do I write to the um, a newspaper? Do I stop paying? And I think for someone who has uh, been active as an academic in, in Britain, we've done a lot of things on the academic front. We initiated academic boycott. There was a lot of publicity, a lot of pressure. The Israelis were very worried about it. The Israelis set up uh, you know, teams to try to deal with boycott, but they were frightened of it. It does make an impact. What you do as a group, or as an individual, or as a committee, or as a, even small groups can make a big difference, actually. And uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that people will, will um, uh, say, yes, I can do things that things can be done even from, from, from Berlin. Thank you so much. Thank you.